So what happens when your line of credit is smaller than your actual total monthly income? This often occurs for my clients that have high income, right? They're making over 10,000 a month on a consistent regular basis, or maybe you're someone that has irregular income, right? You make less than 10,000 one month, more than 10,000 the other, and you've got this small line of credit to work with and you're getting yourself confused, let's just say, or maybe you're having an issue where you're not really knowing when you're at a true zero balance on your line of credit after you've made that first initial chunk to get things rolling, okay? So on the board here, we are going to uh, use an example. I got a client, a couple. The husband gets Velocity Banking, but now this video is strictly going to be for wife because wife is the one that's handling the actual mechanics so I'm gonna talk directly to wife here for you know for majority of the video so we're just gonna go right into it from where we're at right now you had originally made a chunk on May 24th for 10k and as you know we got a $10,000 line of credit that's what Wells Fargo here's our cash flow there's your income I know that can go up and down total debt all right we uh, as of right now you currently owe 2,000 on the line of credit okay so we're gonna be doing velocity banking and now for your situation what I basically mapped out is what you're pretty much doing on a, on a regular basis right so you've got your main checking account money goes in you've got your line of credit here and then this is the same line of credit I'm just kind of showing what happens when you extract money out so when you get your income after you've made your chunk right now you owe money on the line of credit right that's clear when you go to put this income back in right for you this this money stays there because what you're doing is you're actually going here to the credit card right and you're taking out majority of your expenses right majority of your expenses are being used to pay bills for the most part right and then the bills that are debts that cannot be paid with credit obviously that money comes out of the line of credit right back to the this is the same thing I wrote one and two but these are two different um, you know instances right we've got your checking account where money goes in and then the same checking account right when money comes out so I just that's just how I drew it another option to really really help you um, separate incoming from outgoing what you could do is have one checking account where money lands right and then you could set up another checking account with the same bank right same bank and actually send money out from the line of credit to that checking account, which would pay bills, pay debts, make your chunk payment. So you could explore that if you think that would be easier for you so you don't get mixed up with line of credit money, right? Which is the leverage and then your incoming money. Because I know what's happening sometimes is it looks like you have money to make the next chunk like right away because you know all this went in right so pretty much zeroed out the line of credit and then you've got your credit card which is paying all the bills for the next 30 days which you won't you won't actually owe that money till 30 days later right and then when it comes time to get incoming income again and then outgoing expenses for you majority of your bills are coming out all at once so you not only have to pay the upcoming bills but you also got to pay back that credit card in full to use it again and I know that can get a little confusing so I just wanted to show you what is actually going on with it and now let's go over when the perfect time to actually make that next chunk because that's what we really need to focus on is making sure that we're chunking around the right time period so that we don't 
over chunk or over leverage and put ourselves in a bit of a trap. This can happen to people who have high income. You put yourself in a bit of a trap because you may have over chunked the line of credit, right, in the to begin with, or you chunked too early. And I believe that's what's happening with you here on the board is you guys are chunking a little too fast. And what I want to do is put a cushion, right? So we're going to identify this cushion as the independent month. This independent month is going to stand for, it is going to show you when you're at a true zero balance on the line of credit. Now, to know that you're at a true zero balance on the line of credit is when you literally do not have to use the line of credit to pay the upcoming expenses for that independent month, where you literally don't have to pull from it to pay bills. That's when you know you're at a true balance. Another indicator is when you actually see your cash flow in the checking account after the bills are paid. You're like, oh, I still have money left over. This is this would be my cash flow. All my bills, are, all my bills are paid. My line of credit is at zero, and my credit card is at zero. Right. So we're going to recognize that as the independent month. The best time to chunk in that independent month would be probably the middle or the end, right? Right before or during that month, right? So we're in May, right? It was May 24. If you did your chunk, now we're in June. Okay. It's as I'm recording this video and the last time we, that I spoke with husband, it's, it was June, uh, over the weekend, June 7, June 8th, right? And we have this balance of 2K on the line of credit and we've got the, you know, whatever the balance is on the, on the credit card. We're running our bills all for the month of June, right? I know that we've got a bonus coming in. I know husband's making extra money, right? Right, whatever is extra, okay? goes into the line of credit, okay? Don't pay the credit card just yet. Don't pay it right away. Let that sit. When we're done with June, the line of credit should be at zero or close to it, okay? Because we're not chunking right now. We have already chunked. So you should zero out the line of credit sooner than later. Once you zero it out, let it sit. Okay, keep paying your bills through the credit card and then start to actually transition over here. This is going to go against the rule of using cash to pay bills. And I know that may seem like a delay when we use cash directly to pay bills rather than always pulling from the line of credit and dumping the money in. But when the line of credit is, is not big enough to supply for the amount of income you have coming in, we want to make sure we're not confusing ourselves. So we're going to give ourselves that cushion. That's the only reason why I'm going to allow us to wean ourselves off of the line of credit, right? So as soon as you zero it out, if you don't need to use the line of credit after we've zeroed it out, don't use it. You're running up the balance on the credit card, right? So what I wrote is that if the line of credit is at zero by July 20th, right? July 20th, and you know these numbers, right? So if the line of credit is at zero by July 20th, then our independent month would be August and we wouldn't chunk till the middle or the end of the month. And the reason being is because all of your bills, right, are at the beginning of every month. So you're going to have to owe in August, right? You're going to have to owe in August the whole um, amount of money that you used in July. So for July's bills, you're going to owe it in August on the credit card. That will either come out of the line of credit if need be, or right here, right? So you're, so you're gonna stop using the line of credit when the, when the line of credit hits true zero by July 20. 
Now, I'm pretty sure you're going to do that much sooner because you don't have a big balance over here and we're in, the, we're in early June, right? But I know that the expenses on the credit card for June will be owed in July and you'll most likely pull it out of the line of credit, right, to, to pay the whole balance in full and then you run your bills again in July. You keep it going. What we're doing is we're, we're weaning ourselves, we're getting ourselves off of the line of credit so that we know that it's definitely at a true zero balance. And then now you're kind of just flirting with your cash and the credit card. And by the end of July, going into August, you'll pay this credit card off in full, either with your cash or the line of credit. But like I said, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have plenty of cash here. So you're just gonna send it directly here. Zero it out, pay your bills, right? Use that same money, cash went to the credit card, beginning of August, right? Cash went to the credit card, do the same thing like you're normally doing, run all the bills that you possibly can to that credit card. Whatever bills that could have been drawn out of the line of credit to, to pay those bills that cannot be paid with a credit card, you're gonna use the remaining cash, right? So you sent some cash to the credit card to get used again to pay bills, and then you're gonna use the rest of the cash to pay those bills that cannot be paid with a credit card, gotcha? And then the line of credit is still at zero. The line of credit is still at zero, then come the middle of August, or even towards the end, in your case, it'll most likely be the middle, you'll go ahead and make your next 10K chunk, right? And so that's basically giving us June, well, the rest of May, so like the last week of May, a full month June, a full month July, partial about a third or even half of the month of August. So almost a three to four month window that we're giving ourselves, right? And if you just give yourself this window, right? You give yourself that independent month, then you're gonna allow yourself to consistently make your 10K chunks every three to four months. And that'll put you on a nice spin here. We're not losing time, by the way, when we get this independent month. We're not losing time because we're only doing this for a temporary period of time until we can get an increase on the line of credit. And I know I was talking with my husband and he was like, within the next week or two, this might not even be a factor at all if we can get a boost up to 20k with Wells Fargo if they're willing to play with us right if they're not willing to play with us then we're just going to do this for literally till August and then we're going to reapply again and try to get that increase on the line of credit and see what happens there so for now just to recap your independent month is August which is roughly three to four months after making the initial chunk the way you know that you've hit zero is when you've paid all your bills for that month because you pay everything in the beginning of the month. Credit card goes to zero from the cash prior to all your cash from July and then that new income that comes in, both husband's check, wife's check, both comes in beginning of the month each and every month. You're gonna have that cash, you're gonna have July's cash. So you're gonna use July's cash to do what? pay July's expenses that was ran on the credit card and use that same money again to pay August expenses, right? And then whatever's left over from August income, those two paychecks, use that money to pay those bills that you cannot pay with a credit card. Meanwhile, the line of credit is still at a full zero balance. If that's the case, extract, pay, right? Extract, pay the bill. Now, the one debt that we're not paying with the cash is the mortgage that we're chunking at, right? So that would be the only debt that you wouldn't uh, 
pay with your cash directly. You can or you, you know, it's, it's up to you. But if you wanted to get the whole 10K as principal, then yes, you would use your cash and you make the mortgage payment for the month of August, right? And then you would get another 10K. That would be a full 10K principal chunk, right? But I know what you guys have been doing currently is you've been doing, you've been extracting the 10K, a portion of it pays the mortgage payment for that month, and then the other 74, 7,500 bucks, boom, goes right towards principal. So I hope that helps. Got any questions, talk to husband, and you know, we'll communicate. Save this video in your file, right, in your file so that you don't lose it. And let's see how this works for you. I think this should definitely help. And this should definitely help my other clients and other viewers that are having the issue of, hey, I've got a small debt tool. I make good money. Whenever I take a chunk out, I'm, I'm immediately paying it off, like within that same month. And then when I, by the time I take out all the money for the line of credit, I'm already paying it back in full with that income for that same month that I was in, right? Do, does that mean I get to chunk again or not? And so I hope this really helps putting in a cushion month, I call that the independent month, where you are completely independent from the debt tool. You don't have to use it to um, pay your bills, pay debts, right? So my name is Denzel. Hope this helps. Have a wonderful day and God bless.